Lenin's decree on workers' control was not ratified immediately because it created heated discussion between the different branches of the Bolshevik government. But even with so many differences of opinions, the matter comes down to workers' control. The workers wanted the power to run their own industry. The Bolshevik party, unfortunately, also wanted to control the industries of the Soviet Union, so there was friction there. The workers wanted to control the industry. The Bolsheviks wanted to control the industry. The Bolshevik position was summed up by a Bolshevik trade unionist. The lower organs of control must confine their activities within the limits set by the instructions of the proposed All-Russian Council of Workers' Control. We must say it quite clearly and categorically so that workers in various enterprises don't go away with the idea that the factories belong to them. This funny idea that maybe the place where you work should be yours, that maybe your labor should be owned by you. Just that simple idea that workers should own the factories they work in. That was too extreme for the Bolsheviks. These lower organs of control, these workers working in factories, they can't go away with these funny ideas that they somehow own the factories. This was a common position in the Bolshevik party. Some believed that the workers' wishes should be appeased, but not totally realized. So they had to come to a compromise, and a new and improved decree on workers' control was written in a classic work called The Bolsheviks on Workers' Control. Morris Brinton explains the new regulations on workers' control as follows. Factory committees would be allowed to remain the control organ of each individual enterprise, but each committee was to be responsible to a regional council of workers' control, subordinated in turn to an all-Russian council of workers' control. The composition of these higher organs was decided by the party. When we think of democracy, we often think the majority rules. But here we have a case where the majority is allowed to maintain a kind of symbolic power. This new and revolutionary system of workers' control in the factory committees was not seen as an important component of the Bolshevik vision. This was clear in the manner of representation. The workers fully controlled the factories with their factory committees, but the new party rules created a complex hierarchy that left the factory committees at the bottom of the decision-making process. These restrictions on workers' control of production completely undermined the accomplishments of the working class. Brinton reflects, long gone were the days when Lenin had asserted the source of power is not a law previously discussed and passed by Parliament, but the direct initiative of the masses from below. Workers' control of production was not part of the Bolshevik Revolution. The idea of workers' control, however, was skillfully used for propaganda purposes. Despite Lenin's talk about giving power to the workers, many people could clearly see his actions were harmful. Leftists began to attack Lenin's organizational centralism. In various articles, Lenin was denounced for a regime of dictatorship in the party, party czarism, and the monarchic structure of the party. Lenin was often criticized as having an emperor complex because he worked hard to maintain purity of opinion within his party and of being too focused on militancy. Robert Daniels shows in excruciating detail how socialist ideology was Lenin's ideology, and those of his adherents who disagreed with him on ideological points had ultimately no recourse but to leave the Bolshevik faction. Anything that Lenin believed was socialist, and if you didn't agree with him, you were fighting against socialism. That was Lenin's point of view. There were also important socialist thinkers from Lenin's era, like Rosa Luxemburg, who wrote that Lenin's ultra-centrism is not something born of a positive creative spirit, but of the negative sterile spirit of the watchman. But Lenin did not describe his methods as authoritarian, he described them as democratic centralism. He wrote, 
the principle of democratic centralism and autonomy of local institutions means specifically freedom of criticism, complete and everywhere, as long as this does not disrupt the unity of action already decided upon and the intolerability of any criticism undermining or obstructing the unity of action decided on by the party. In other words, you are free to criticize anything you want as long as you do not get in the way or try to stop the actions of the Bolshevik party. Despite Lenin's claim that there should be freedom of speech, complete and everywhere, he objects to a specific kind of freedom of speech, that is, the kind of speech that goes against political actions he and the Bolshevik party support. Although Leninists often admit Lenin perhaps made mistakes, they claim that his actions were necessary to further the goal of socialism, or at least he believed that his actions were necessary to further the goal of socialism. But when we look at the history of socialism or Marxism, we see radical ideas about individual independence, about society without exploitation and oppression from above. We see that human nature is about freedom and no one wants to be told what to create, when to create and how to create it. We see faith in the working class to make their own mistakes. But when considering these ideas of socialism and then looking at Lenin, he seems to be the exact opposite, especially when he wrote, We want the socialist revolution with human nature as it is now with human nature that cannot dispense with subordination, control, and managers. 